Welcome back to this week's episode of the Watch Before You Die podcast. I am Ben, and alongside me, I have Brian and Justin. And they said, Ben, you can't do the intro this week. And I said, let me cook, because we watched uh, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. It's a 1966 Italian epic spaghetti Western film. And I wanted to do the intro this week for one reason alone. Um, I sat thinking to myself, what is an Italian epic spaghetti Western film? And so I did some research. I actually did those out of order, by the way. I don't think I said that right. But um, I did some research because I'm like, what what does that even mean? And come to find out, Western films in the 60s into the 70s and maybe even before then were were primarily um, created by Italian filmmakers uh, living still in Italy, most of them, um, though some had come over to the United States. And um, and they had this fascination with Western films. And so they kind of uh, charged forward with the genre, which I thought was very weird because uh, I don't know. I didn't know Italians kind of had like this fascination with uh, Western films and um so yeah that's why they are called uh italian spaghetti westerns uh they were created by italian directors um they also were sometimes put into the italian language and broadcast over so yeah there you go there's your fun fact but we are going to get into this film and we're doing it differently we are going to give you our thoughts first so if you don't want our thoughts skip to the end. Brian will put it in the comments or the, the bookmark and you can just click on what our rating is. But we're going to give our thoughts first. And because I've talked so much, Brian and Justin are going to go first and I'll reserve my judgments for the end. So who wants to start with their thoughts on this film? Not right. Okay. It's on me. So All right, Brian. piggybacking off of your fun fact, uh, Westerns were also made in other areas. I also looked into this a little bit and they okay. have a couple other names to play off the spaghetti Western. The only reason they chose the word spaghetti is uh, somebody coined the term referring to Italians. And so yeah. uh, Itali- uh, Westerns that were made in Spain, they called paella Westerns. And then there was okay. one Japanese Western that was made that was called a ramen Western. So ramen that's Western, incredible. Yep. Pretty great. I see, hope that's one I would do like we, to say. Do we know what that movie was? Because I feel like I need to watch it. I can look it up. Hold on one second. Okay. Yep. Somebody put a little typing computer on them. Tampopo. The oh, Tampopo. Tampopo. It's a 1985. Of that is not yes, our next movie. Classic film. <laughs> Tampopo. Of course. Of but, course. Yeah. Um, my thoughts on this movie. I think this movie is a great movie. Um, I really enjoyed watching this movie. I do have to give it the okay. demerit that I, I give many movies that are we've watched so far which is it's a pretty long movie uh three hours is a long mm. time to sit down no it's not it's not a pretty long movie it's a very <laughs> long movie very long and there are many shots um as beautiful as they are and as much as i actually enjoyed them um that just go on too long like i don't need to see a guy's face for that many seconds necessarily to know yeah. what he looks like or how tense the scene is um that said i really did enjoy this movie a lot. I think it's a great movie. Um, I did think, uh, sorry, training it off the tracks again, uh, talking without thinking. Um, gosh, here's the dead air part. <laughs> I need some help getting my train back on the track. Uh, we'll just see if I find it. Oh, yeah. Italian Westerns. Because these Westerns were filmed in Italy, uh, the director had a cast of characters in his head that he wanted to use for the movie. Um, mm-hmm. And he would bring those actors with him to film this movie but that means that most of the extras that they have in this movie are italian natives <laughs> and so we had this issue in this movie where some people are speaking english and their mouth is perfectly matching their words that they say and then sometimes you have a dub that isn't so perfect because the double or the extra is just speaking in their own native language something close to what the dialogue will be and they put it in after in post and so at first yeah. i was like does this is this whole movie in Italian? Is this whole movie in English? Is it a split? It turns out it's a split. Uh, but that means that they could make it multilingual. They could translate the whole thing into Italian. And then, you know, John Wayne's voice won't or mouth won't match and then vice yeah. versa. So um, I, I did notice like kind of poor dubbing in some spots, but that's OK. I think uh, they spent a lot of time on the the audio and um, 
just the sound effects and stuff like that. Sometimes they were a little bit too crispy or too high in the mix for me. But overall, I think it was a great movie. Um, biggest demerits just being it's it's a long one. Yeah. OK, uh, Justin, do you want to share uh, some of your thoughts on the good, the bad and the Justin? See what you did there <laughs> thank you like it. okay it. <laughs> he said i didn't like it when i got on this call brian okay. said i was the handsome one that's so. right true it's not even in the i must have been movie. i must have been switching my laundry out at that point because i know he was lying go and, ahead and and you didn't get a vote so uh, it's true that's true anyway, um no I, I this movie had a lot of really interesting things i think i think anybody who has even if you've never seen this movie before you know nothing about westerns you get some of the things that happen in this movie. You get the the cigarillo uh, chewing. You get the 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 little shots of like the eyes darting back and forth during the Mexican standoff. You get the Mexican standoff itself. You get you know all of these classic like shootouts, the anti heroes. All of these things are are things that like I'm not saying started from this movie because certainly there's other movies where Clint Eastwood has been you know an anti hero because that's kind of like his thing. But um, but but like the music cue, right? Um, I, I thought all of that stuff is just perfect for this movie. Um, all of it worked really well. Um, I don't have I don't have a lot to say negatively about it because okay. because it is an older movie and I think I think when they were making a lot of those movies they were kind of unpopular, right? So um talking about the spaghetti western and that kind of thing they were they were it wasn't it wasn't kind the way they were talking about spaghetti westerns in this country and so you know like little little things like that i tend to forgive a lot of that stuff i think i think all the characters are very interesting you look at um i can't remember what's his name the the guy that's the bad one i don't remember his name the mustache guy um, angel um, eyes yes thank you um there you go he he's like he's like what you think of when you think of like a western bad guy mm -hmm. like the bandit the bandit uh, leader or whatever um you think of you think of blondie and 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 how that's like that's like your your bounty hunter cowboy character um and how it, when every time he goes into a room you're just not sure if he's going to do uh something completely selfish or something that's like saving somebody's life and then you got um what what's the what's the ugly one's name i can't remember tuco Tuco, thank you. I wanted to call him there Luca because now we're talking about spaghetti westerns, but mm -hmm. that's a that's a Disney movie. Um, <laughs> wrong. It's about wrong. mermen. Let's see how it's about mermaids. Um, no, but um, um, Tuco, uh, I think, is like one of my absolute favorite characters uh, in a, in any western movie. Right? I think he's he's got a lot of the comedy there. I think he's got a lot of heart to his story. Mm -hmm. I think he's got a lot of. Um, he's got a lot of what people are looking for when they want like an action movie that's got a little bit of humor to it, but I actually um, think Tuco drives this movie a little bit because they work yeah. so hard to make Clint Eastwood like the stern, stone faced character, and the bad yeah. guy is a mystery and an intrigue. And so it's really Tuco that's pushing this movie along, right? It's his goofiness, yeah. it's his um It's his story. Yeah, I totally in a lot of ways. Um also fun fact, I think we now that we've watched 15 movies um our first repeat character at least that i recognized is the bad character angel eyes he was one of the bad guys uh in liberty valance's gang he was just one of the mm -hmm. the guys that followed liberty valance around um yep. so he's like our first repeat actor actually which is pretty funny yeah it's really good yeah it's actually it's actually interesting to see how many like obviously i don't think it's as obvious in this film but the, how many of these these Western actors, they just kind of rinse and repeat them into other films in, mm -hmm. in maybe in a different role, but maybe not. Some of them just keep reappearing in, in this genre, um, whether it was just because that's what they had or, or some Casting. other reason. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. But I, but I really feel like, I really feel like if, if there's a character that Clint Eastwood is, it's probably this one. Mm -hmm. It's gotta be right. Like, and in any movie I've seen of his, it's like this is the this is sort of the persona that he has. And it makes sense because this this movie is considered the third installment or the third movie in a trilogy that isn't a true trilogy uh, called the Dollars Trilogy. I don't know if you guys uh, learned anything about that, but there's a fistful of dollars, uh, just a dollar more or something similar to that. 
and then the good, the bad, and the ugly. And all of them have this character in them, played by Clint Eastwood. He acts exactly the same, but he has a different name in each movie. Um, but they don't use it very often. They call him Blondie, and he has like the same clothes and the same. Yeah, it's, it's just what people call him. It's not his actual name. Exactly. Um, in this movie, apparently his name, his real name is Joe, but like you never hear that. Um, and but some people say that those those three movies go hand in hand because it's the same character and this is the third installment of it. So um, it makes sense that it's like every time you see a Clint Eastwood movie, he's playing the same character. Well, three of them, he almost is. And it's the same director. So, well, well, and also it kind of, it kind of lends credence to the theory that the third in a trilogy is always the better one. Mm -hmm. This is the best one. So you say so, (laughs) Ben, let's circle back around to you. Do you have any other thoughts? I have thoughts. Yes. Um, do, you ones, do you have ones pertaining to the movie? I do. I think when we shot the episode for um, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, I may have mentioned that I was not a Western fan. I think I actually talked about how this, uh, The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance kind of swayed me, and I was like, wow, that, that is a very good film. Maybe I should watch some more Westerns. Um, I should not. I should not watch more Westerns. Um, I started this movie and I got bored immediately, which I, I know it might be hard to imagine. I got bored immediately. So then I thought, and I knew it was three hours. I don't think that helped. So then I thought I will put it in to like a 1.5 scenario. Sure. And I got bored still. And I thought, boy, this is going to go poorly. So then I thought I'm going to do what every good uh, podcaster should do. I'm going to fake it. And I'm going to watch a synopsis of the film mm-hmm. because there's no way I'm finishing this film. I like so I thought, going. I'm going to watch the synopsis and I got bored watching the synopsis of the film. <laughs> and then I thought, boy, we're, we're, we are in trouble. We're in trouble. So then I thought the trailer got to be, it's going to give me something. And I got bored watching the trailer. And so quite frankly, this was not the movie for me. And I think that's okay. I think it's okay to just say some movies just don't, aren't for certain people. So like, I mean, movie. it wasn't totally. my movie. I tried, I failed multiple times and so i had to just chalk it up to maybe westerns really aren't my thing because i mean if we look kind of what we've seen right i I enjoyed the man who shot liberty valance i didn't really like the i didn't love ace in the hole which is kind of it's not a western but it's in the same vein in some Mm -hmm. regards um i didn't like uh what was the other one that we saw that was pale um, face the pale face i i didn't enjoy that one at all and so i think it's just one of those things where it's like maybe the man who shot liberty valance was the standout and mm-hmm. not the oh let's go try something we knew we didn't really like to begin with fair so enough. Let, me, let me ask you a question that's my that, thoughts let me ask you a question about that i want to interrogate okay. that a little bit yeah did you like godfather part one I'm not a huge fan of the Godfather series okay. altogether. Okay. Um, and, and, and the reason the reason I ask that is because I feel like a lot of the same yeah. a lot of the same ways that they shot this movie feel yeah. very similar to the ways that that the Godfather was shot. Like and do you know, the long sequences, yeah. the close yep. up, the close up acting, yep. the you know the, the you know the not cutting away, the keep it rolling kind yep. of thing. I think I think yeah. is a is a style that that I think is more about that than than about yeah. westerns, but maybe westerns I, as well. But I think I think you're right because I think like I also think that I can attribute it to like I think the first western that I ever properly saw was the Zorro with like Antonio Banderas, kind of when they like rebooted Zorro, sure. and so I I saw that. And then I saw the second one, I think, that they made, also also with Antonio Banderas. And then I went tr- back and tried to watch Westerns, and it was like, oh, so th- this is not what a Western really is. Because mm-hmm. Zorro was more of an action adventure movie than a traditional classic Western, if you want to call it that. So, yeah, yeah that's kind of my, that's my thoughts. I have a rating. I'm going to give a rating, but I'm going to be mindful of what my thoughts are Mm -hmm. on it for my rating so are we ready for ratings or do we want to before we jump to ratings i want each of us to take a turn placing everybody in the good the bad and the ugly slots because i'm curious if we had to give each of us the good the bad and the ugly slots i'm curious what it would be this this is nothing but bad news i think it's Um, nothing but great news i'll go first uh, okay go ahead I, I actually think, have thoughts as well. I think Justin is the good. I agree. So we're on the same page. <laughs> I think ben is, ben is the bad. And I think hmm. I'm the ugly. 
Interesting. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think the only change I might make is switching the mine and your roles in that movie. But again, I didn't see the full, I didn't see it to the extent you guys did. So I'll trust your sure. judgment. Um, but I think just based off what I've read on it, that I, I think those roles for me could be interchangeable. I think personally, you're the hardest to place out of mm-hmm. these these roles. OK, I just Justin immediately for me is the good. OK, so. Both Ben and I agree that Justin is the good, and Justin will cast the tie-breaking vote for who is the bad and who is the ugly. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Justin. Unless I... Well... Hmm. I mean, I feel like... I feel like I'm... I feel like I'm... I'm the bad in a lot of ways. No. No. I'm sorry. Why? Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, maybe, maybe, no. maybe, so maybe I'm got... no. <laughs> I see. I don't know why you're saying I'm the good. I'm at least the ugly. Oh gosh. Because because I think no. I think two goes nuts. No. Um, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna. Know. This is what I'm gonna go off. I'm gonna give you some words as how the Wikipedia specifically de- um, describes these characters, and I think this okay. can help. Okay. 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 The good is de- is um doesn't really have necessarily descriptions. But we all kind of know what the good is. The the um, the uh, Tuco's character, the ugly, is described as cunning, cagey, resilient, and resourceful. And the bad is described as ruthless, confident, borderline sadistic. All right, so I'm definitely the bad. Okay, I <laughs> take it back. <laughs> okay, just a complete. So one. I think we've got it. Then we got I think it. we've got it. Okay, yeah, great. I think. In the comments, if you disagree, please let us know uh, if you'd mm-hmm. re-rank us. Uh, that's that's what we're going to say. And then I think now we're good to jump into ratings. Oh, okay. It. I'll go first just just because mine's – I'm going to give it a six. Okay. Um, I think thank it's God, Thank God for that because you said something I, yeah. like a 1.5 earlier, and I was like, there's no, no, a no. lot of bad movies that we've done before. I, I think it's unfair to give this a bad score considering I just recognize it's not my style of movie because six, I don't think a six for taste for me that I don't think that means it's a bad movie. Mm-hmm. Like similarly, though, I'm not going to give away a movie. There's a movie that I very much enjoy is very popular and is very long. And I would probably give it a six as well. It doesn't have anything to do with enjoyment. It has to just do with the style of movie. Um, so six for me. Okay. That's fair. I'll go next. Um, I think this is my favorite movie that we've watched so far. I'm giving it okay. a 9.3. Wow, that's that's really good. Nice. I think this movie, I understand why it's a classic. I understand why people like this movie and why it was referenced. Everything from the soundtrack to the shots to even just, it had a little bit of ex machina type stuff where the right stuff happens at the right time and all that. But I just really enjoyed this movie. I liked it, even though it was a super long movie. <laughs> Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you probably thought you were going to be the highest, but no, you're not. nobody, nobody thought he was going to be the highest. <laughs> I didn't. We knew you would be the highest. I knew this would be the second 10. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, no, it I would be, so it would well. technically be my third 10 because Phantom Thread was a 10 and then uh, Farewell was a 10 as well. But I'm giving this a 9.5. But I, but 9. I don't 5. think you actually gave a Phantom Thread a 10 because we never got well, to... Well, when we, when we went back we, and switched it, I... But we didn't get to... We never got to release that episode. That's not canon. It's not canon. Never happened. I still have that My rating written God. down there. Uh, okay. Spoiler alert. There's an episode that you will never see that died along with a, a workhorse of a computer for us. Um... Where oh, we, I forgot all about that. Where we that re-ranked the lost episode. some episodes, mm-hmm. some um, some movies. So we actually, we as we do on this podcast, we didn't discuss what movie we were going to re-rank. We all got to pick our own, and we all chose yep. the same movie to re-rank. And we oh, will actually, up, right? we will actually, I think we should just say, though it's not canon, it will be canon. I think we'll, we will revisit that. We'll just do a short episode to give you the, our re-rankings. Yeah. And maybe a second movie that we'd like to re-rank because we're getting close to... We're about halfway to our next when we yeah. close our next yep. ranks. So maybe on the yep. on the 20th episode, we'll do all of it. But, okay, I think we're ready to re-roll for a new movie. Our average yep. score, I skipped over that, is an 8.3. So Okay, good. I didn't bring it down tremendously. Not then. too bad. Let's, not let's too bad. Get, let's get something from the turn of the century. 
Please. Do our best. So every or, week or something short. <laughs> every episode when we review a movie, we re-roll for a new movie. We have 1,230 movies remaining, and this week's number is 1,119. Okay, Praise so that's like that's like 80s, Lord. 90s, right? 1,000. Two, I'm going to say 2,000s. And 19. The year 2000s. is 2010. Yeah. The name of the movie wow. is Nostalgia for the Light. I was not encouraged by that name because <laughs> never heard of it. <laughs> See it on oh. Ben's face. Oh, I'm I'm hyped already. I know you guys won't be though. A uh, this is a is that a documentary? Documentary about oh, two no. different searches conducted in the Chilean at Atacama. I might have said that wrong. Desert. One by astronomers looking for answers about the history of the cosmos, and one by w- a woman looking for the remains of loved ones killed by. Uh, Pinochet's regime, which I don't know who that, that is either. That, this, so. Okay, this actually sounds great. Yeah. So yeah, it sounds we'll, like if out of all the documentaries, this, this may be one. We'll that I go see. For. It, it looks um looks like it's going to have to be purchased um for either Amazon Prime four twenty nine or Apple TV three ninety nine. It does look and like it's available if... for free on Canopy with a K, which I believe okay. is a through a school. So if you're a student, you might be able to access. Um, okay that and there might be other locations to find it as well so we'll we'll find that and we'll watch it i'm a lifelong student so yeah all right well that's our next one um we hope you enjoyed this one and we will see you in a couple weeks i think not next week but in a couple so we'll see you then